what's up guys, Carter here, welcome back to Noble Garage. So this video is going to take place over a couple weekends, I have a bunch of little things to do, I'm going to just film it all and then put it all into one video. So this weekend I'm going to clean up some of the wiring, I have some new Deutsch connectors, I'm going to clean up under the dash and under the hood, and then I also got the strut braces back from Powder Coat. So I'm going to throw those on now, and let's see how they look. Okay, so just giving you a look at the paint job on these. So, they did a really nice job with them, way better than I could have done. The finish is really good. Definitely worth getting these powder coated for the cost of paint and you factor in the time that it would have taken me to clean these all up. And then I also picked up some new hardware. So I'm going to get these all assembled and put them on the car. Okay, so got it installed. Took a lot longer than I thought, but I had to cut the plastic and I forgot about that. So I tried to do as neat a job as I could. The holes ended up a little bigger than I wanted, but it's not too bad. Gives enough clearance for it to, to come through. So a pretty clean install, doesn't look too out of place aside from the bar across the trunk. So that's all I'm going to have time for this weekend. Um, next weekend I'll do the front and do the wiring that I said I was going to do. Hey guys, I'm back for another weekend. So I've done a bit of work off camera, I've been tidying up the wiring. I'll uh, show you that after it's done, but I've just been shortening up wires, cutting off unnecessary stuff, just tidying it up a bit more. Um, I've also rigged up a, a boost gauge here, so I'm going to finish that wiring up and show you that after it's done. I also made a floor for the trunk. So what I did was cut out a piece of plywood to the exact shape here and then just laid that so it's uh, supported here in the corners so this is nice and firm and strong now wouldn't wouldn't ever know that the the batteries in the trunk so right now I'm going to get to work on finishing up these side pieces here. So if you look on this side, you can see that it has the tan fabric on it. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and try and convert these to black. So I'm already pretty deep into this. What I did is took the covers off both the black ones I had from the sedan. And then this one here is from the wagon. And then I just um, basically reattached the black to the wagon one, stapled it all down there, so then this is going to fold over. And then what I did is I, uh, I glued it all on the back. So you can see here I have one already done. It's just drying. And if you look on the other side, that's what it looks like. So I'll give you a look at both of them when they're both done and dry. I'm going to move on to spraying this one with the spray glue and stretching the fabric across it. Okay, so I got this all installed. Looks pretty good. Much better than the ugly tan cloth. As you can see, I also got the back seats in. Give you a look from behind. Got uh, the release working too, so now the those can go down as well. Show you the other side. Still needs a vacuum, but turned out pretty well, I think. So I'm gonna move on to finishing up some wiring now.
So a quick update on the interior. I've cleaned up the wiring quite a bit. As you can see, I used these Deutsch connectors as often as I could instead of these crimp connects. Coming around to the passenger side, I used some sound deadening car insulation around the fuse box here just to get rid of any rattles. So I shortened up all the wires here and uh, just tidied that up. So now the dash looks fairly clean. The unfortunate bit is that I'm going to have to pull it apart to do the AC wiring, but for now this is this is good and I just have to move on to tidying up under the hood a little bit more. So another small update, I finished cleaning up the wiring under the hood here. So it's all kind of tucked there. Um, I redid the one connector that I did. So I soldered that a bit shorter, cut a few of these to make them a bit shorter and resoldered, and then tucked everything underneath the fuse box here. So it looks a lot cleaner. Now that that's done, I'm going to move on and install the strut brace. I'll show you what that looks like after I get it in. So I got the strut brace in. That was pretty easy. Looks pretty good. Probably doesn't do a whole lot, but I think it looks cool. So now I'm going to move on. I have this AC hose that's just been hanging out here. So I need to figure out what size fittings I need and get those ordered. Hey guys, so we're in the coupe right now and what I'm trying to do is I have a ELM327 connected to the car right now, to the OBD2 port. And what I'm trying to do is figure out what messages control the gauge cluster here. So you can see if I, I give it a bit of gas bunch of different data comes up there so what I'm trying to do is isolate the RPM the speed and the water temp so that I can use an Arduino to do the conversion between the ion ECU and the uh, wagon ECU so I can get the gauges working in the wagon so I'm gonna get an Excel chart open and start looking at these numbers and and see if I can figure out uh, how to control these gauges um, out of the car. Hey, so it's a different day now. I spent most of the morning uh, doing some reverse engineering here and figuring out how to control the gauges. I think I've already said, but I'm using a USB. I have the OBD2 plugged in down there. So this is an ELM327 chip. And I figured out the commands to control the tack, the temp, and the speedometer. So these are what I'm going to need to do the signal conversion in the wagon. So let me just type these in here and I'll show you how it works. Alright, so I'll give a quick rundown on this. I might do a separate video if you guys are interested going into more detail about how to read off the bus and how to figure these out for your car. But to start, here is the message format for the tachometer. So if you notice the numbers here are in hex, so the first one there is 88, so that's the message priority. The next is 1B, that's the receiver address, and then 10 is the sending address. And we're following three hex numbers there are the data that we're going to be sending. So what we want to do is first set the header of the message that we're going to send. So that's done with this command. So we want to set the header there. And then it'll, it'll reply, the ELM will reply with an OK. Uh, so just to show you before, the car is off. We're sitting at zero. And then I'm going to put in the RPM I want. So I made a little 
table here as examples, but obviously the values will range all in between here depending on what RPM you're at. So 1F40, if you convert that into decimal and then divide by two, four, sorry, you'll get 2000 RPM. So if I now, if I send that, I'm going to send this, I'm going to hit enter here and I'll show you in real time as it goes up. There we go. So now we're at 2000 RPM. If we want to change it, we just issue another command and it'll change the RPM. So I've gone through and done this for all of the gauges. I have the coolant, the tack, and the speed. So now that that's done, I know how to control these and I can read the data off the other computer and then send it to the gauge cluster to make the gauges move when the engine accelerates and you can tell me the speed. So I'm probably going to do that off camera and uh, just show you what I've done after it's already done. So I'm going to put these code in a uh, Arduino and we'll have that run automatically and put it under the dash. So just to show you that I got them all working, you can see that I've maxed out the temperature gauge there and then I've set the speed to 60 here. So I could go through and figure out basically anything on the cluster and control it from my laptop, which is pretty cool in itself. Um, if there's any other functions I need, I'll figure them out as I go. Currently, these are the three right now that I care about. All right, well, thanks guys for watching. That's going to be the end of this video. I'm not really sure even what we got done. I'll have to see when I edit it. I hope it hasn't been too choppy over the multiple weekends we've worked on this, but that's just the way it is. These little things take a lot of time and they need to be done. So in the next video, what we'll be doing is the wheels and we'll be wrapping the car. So look forward to that. I'm going to do the Arduino work off camera. So I'll show you next time. Hopefully we have working gauges. So give the video a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.